the brain that creates conditions for diminished psychological performances. Then again with the uh, nervous system. So this system plays a crucial role in regulating various physiological and psychological functions in the old age. So here the weight of the brain decreases by about 10 to 15 percentage. So an efficient cerebral blood supply that can also result in brain that being exposed to uh, potentially uh, amazing, uh, potentially damaging toxins, which are filtered out by a well-functioning cerebral uh, blood supply system. So cellular decline in old age that can also result in the neurofibrillary tangles. Uh, all these th things are some medical terms, okay? Just mention, uh, just I'm mentioning here. Then there could be a chance of due to the nerve problems. Definitely there is a chance of uh, uh, disorders like uh, dementia, Alzheimer's dementia, etc. So that can also be presentable in this area due to the brain uh, problem. Then problem regarding the muscles or the changes regarding the muscles. So there uh, is a general decline in muscle mass and its strength. We can uh, we uh, experience it from the old age people. They seems to be very uh, weak and their muscles are very weak. Okay, sensory organs, old age also uh, leads to uh, deterioration in functioning of sensory organs. So the senses are the means by which an individual is contact with the surroundings environment. So the uh, efficacy and efficiency and the proper functioning of the sensory organs uh, may decline and that also creates a lot of uh, issues among the uh, old age people. Regarding vision, so the reduction in vision that is common in uh, old age, we know that. The hearing, uh, there is also some problem with the uh, hearing ability. Uh, the medical explanations are given in the text, please go through that. Then regarding the taste, okay, so their sensitivity also uh, re get reduced. Uh, they may have complex tasters. Uh, the elderly, they generally reported to be significantly worse than the younger populations. Uh, the complexity of the problem we can understand in that way. Then say smell. There is a seemingly no decline in the sense of smell among the elderly, so except uh, when unwell. So when they're having some physical problem or some problem related to uh, their uh, respiratory or sensory organs, then only they may feel uh, that there is a problem with the smell. Otherwise, they are good in that. Then touch. So sensitivity to discriminate temperature is reported to a, uh, a decline with this age. Okay. Then pain. So some studies show an increase in uh, in the pain threshold levels of the elderly. So that is, they can endure more extreme stimuli without perceiving. Uh, these as painful. So the quantification of such threshold differences have uh, not been possible uh, due to the problem involved in constructing a suitable objective measure for a subjective feeling like pain. Okay, then there are some psychosocial changes uh, like the becoming introverted and self-centered, uh, losing hope, etc. So what do you mean by that becoming Intro, introvert and self-centered. So uh, here you may recall the ego, uh, that is an institution of the personality which tries to maintain a psychic homostasis or equilibrium that between and the superego, between it and the superego, uh, with regard to the adaptation to the external stimuli. So we should have an understanding of the uh, ego approach or ego centered approach uh, that was uh, very scientifically uh, explained by Sigmund Freud uh, in ego super ego state. So we know that each one has possessed okay these ego states and uh, that different from one another. So it ego super ego all those things are there and uh, the changes that happen in the id and uh, superego or the equilibrium that is between the id and uh, superego, uh, there could be uh, adaptation to the external stimuli. Then, however, in old age, due to the reduced stamina and energy and eruption of many physical ailments, 
lesser ego energy that is available for the external adaptation so, so this explains the reason for loss of interest in outer world among the elderly or when one is ill okay so it also tends to make the aging person introvert and self-centered so they want to be away from others or they will be sitting or they want to get isolated and they will be sitting in the corner of the home or in the society they want to be more self-centered then so losing hope that is the next psychosocial change so here the ego's proper functioning that depends on the element of hope okay so the entire ego functioning is based on the hope so hope for a bright future helps people endure the greatest pain so here they are going to this uh, thing or they feel that they are going to uh, end up their life therefore they are not having much dreams or no expectations at all so since this hope uh, the hope that they have reduced or the hope that diminishes with the age uh, and a better tomorrow is a mirage in old age so it's a danger to the ego that is great there so diminishing uh, reservoir of energy available to the ego forces a person to look inwardly to internal pathological symptoms then the next change is exclusion of uh, stimuli so here yeah, the aging process diminishes an individual's capacity to deal with multitude of stimuli that is required in our complex society so consequently the elderly having lowered psychic energy at their disposal uh, that begin to exclude uh, many of the stimuli from their awareness as they are un unable to deal with all of them so this is uh, true of all sensory stimuli except the olfactory nerve okay so then regarding the defense mechanism that's also uh, a change in the psychosocial aspect uh, defense mechanism in old age uh, certain ego defense mechanisms as adaptive strategies are exhibited more frequently uh, in particularly we can tell uh, with future coming to an end or death approaching an individual quickly slips into the regression so this defense mechanism involves going back to an old less sophisticated method of doing things so whenever a threatening situation arises an individual may retreat to an earlier form of adaptation uh, or generally a childish or a primitive one okay so they're going back to the all the times that they had then conservation of a psychic energy so here the characteristics of adaptive qualities of our personality that differ in different stages of a human life a human life cycle including old age so defense mechanisms and adaptive strategies in old age that indicate the fact that uh, there is a uh, vanning power and the ego tries to maintain itself by giving up the certain powers in order in order to maintain or preserve others more essential to its unity then again the next change is the dealing with ambiguity so in old age an individual uh, ability to deal with ambiguity decreases considerably so here ambiguity means there is a two dimensions of one problem so two meanings of the thing okay so the mystery of death that is an obvious eternity in old age so among others is mainly responsible for relative intolerance of the ambiguity so age related changes like retirement diminished parenting role put the aged uh, in confusion and tension uh, here ambiguity brings to tension and anxiety always uh, the result of ambiguity uh, ends up with the tension and anxiety uh, psychologically intolerance of ambiguity is common among the elderly uh, they tend to see things in black and whites to deny the ambiguous grace so here the structure uh, prematurely in advance of the adequate uh, evidences or they take extreme positions okay the next change uh, in psychosocial aspect is change in self-concept 
so many bio psycho psychosocial factors tend to influence self concept of the elderly so here the biological changes like losses in strength sensory uh, uh, in uh, functioning uh, then sensual capacity energy levels do represent losses in ability to achieve the gratifications in a accustomed way uh, and to accustomed degrees so uh, new demands on the organism that may become a threatening because of the reduced capacity to handle them socially the changes in roles and corresponding status losses uh, imply and the consequent threat uh, to self all that are much more significant uh, psychologically than any diminution of the actual functional capacity thus we can tell that for men uh, who derive their ego satisfaction by their role as bread earner of the family the term and devalues devalues their worth uh, and thereby reducing their self-concept so here the problem uh, we can understand in a simple way that once they reach to the old age they themselves feel that they are not uh good for nothing as they were before because they were productive and they were the breadwinner of the family but now their age or the problem that happens with the age that made them to uh be introverted and they are they themselves feel that uh they can't do anything for uh, others and for themselves hereafter okay then awareness of limited time so in old age the recognition that available time is now seriously limited brings severe psychological loss so this is a very unique in old age uh, the all, total psychological impact of serious that losses uh, say in health or economic status or social relations like death of spouse that is much more severe in old age than early adulthood or middle uh, that are simply because the elderly have no time left to repair the damage because there is no days further for him no, there is no long period of him to recover or restructure their life okay so long term planning for personal achievement that is visible in early age so maybe they viewed as a patently unrealistic in old age so that could be the awareness of limited time then behavioral rigidity that's there so there are number of uh, changes with age that might be expected to cause increased uh, rigidity so changes in nervous system changes in energy levels reaction time and sensory uh, practices or greater strength of existing habits due to over practice so besides this uh, losing control with the losing control over body and external resources the elderly they become fearful of entering into areas where uncertainty levels are higher so they won't be able to focus and they won't be to assert the thing because they are uncertain about the uh, nature and about the things that they're going to come across so uh, this amounts to rigidity and uh, dogmatic behavior is there then uh, the next uh, change could be purposelessness so here human beings are by nature goal directed individuals plan and work hard towards the accomplishment of those plans so our in old age society snatches uh, away role and snatches away the role and responsibilities from the old age so scope for goal directed activities is reduced while in the habits of a purposeful uh, uh, living die hard so thus there grow as a sense of purposelessness especially if the aged are unable to find then newer roles and utilize their leisure time effectively so they become purposelessness in the old age time they may wish to have a good death okay good end of their life that's what they always think forward then wisdom so here aspects of certain aspects of human potentialities appear to develop to maximum realization only in the later part of life and wisdom is one among them so even while the degenerative physical changes are occurring increments in judgmental power and in social wisdom that may uh, take place 
thus while the elderly are at lows on various parameters wisdom and related faculties based on the experiences are on the positive side all these are some of the psychosocial changes that we can see uh, in the old age then implications of age related uh, changes that may be included in the implications of health related changes or implications of economic changes and changes regarding the gender so implications of health related changes so the most obvious manifestation of health uh, related changes in old age is increased dependence in the activities uh, of their daily living so many research studies uh, have shown that in old age with advancing age people require help in activities of daily living like eating uh, getting up and sitting walking making tea coffee taking medicines managing money and so on for everything they need the dependency so it may be noted that there would be high variability among the elderly uh, among the elderly in terms of independence in activities of daily living that rests on factors like heredity nutritional status activity level attitude towards life acceptance of age related changes health seeking behavior etc okay so that's the implications of age related changes when we think in the context of the implications of health related changes uh, that will definitely including the physical health as well as the mental health uh, we can see the changes uh, very explicitly then implications of the economic changes so we know that old age brings deterioration in earning capacities so compulsory uh, retirement add fuel to economic vulnerability among the elderly so they lack the uh, economic uh, stability and they are not capable enough to uh, earn money when they reach to the old age because of their uh, inefficient nature of functioning concerning the uh, physical and mental strength so that causes uh, jobless that causes their economic uh, changes so nearly 93 percentage of the indian population works in the unorganized sector where there are hardly any retirement related social security problems thus people in formal sector they work till their physical capacities when and then they are thrown out of the job market so when they are becoming unable to uh, produce or unable to uh, do their performance in the work as per the organizational goal they are thrown out of the company or the organization so the persons they bring out that one third of elderly in india are living uh, below in poverty line and another one third of it are just above it so thus two, two thirds of the aged population in the country is economically vulnerable and need social assistance that is provided to merely 6% of the population in terms of the old age pension and annapurna uh, schemes etc so where 90 kg of food in and annapurna scheme you know what is happening so there they getting 90 kg of food grains uh, that is given to the destitute uh, elderly per month so that's a Uh, assistance program by the government so needless to say elderly who hardly have means to survive seeking health care services is a distant dream hmm so when we think of gender gender implications uh, we can observe that elderly females have higher uh, rates of morbidity though it has been observed that women are sicker but men die sooner so epidemiologically uh, apart from age related ailments like diabetes hypertension deterioration in sensory capabilities etc females suffer from uh, two broad health disorders that is gynecological and post menopausal morbidities okay then certain socio cultural factors also add to the morbidity among females all through the life cycle females are subject to various kinds of discrimination oppression and exploitations 
parents preference for male child uh, right from birth to educational and health facilities nutrition and other resource allocation early marriage multiple pregnancies are some factors that accumulated effects of which uh, contribute to the vulnerability of may gynecological complications and nutritional deficiencies so fastening the aging deterioration among the females so, so what are the reasons behind the female females uh, disturbances or problem that they may suffer or have been given here uh, like we have just uh, presented it okay so the social response and the counselor's role could be the next uh, area that we have to discuss uh, national policy on older persons in 1999 that gives due recognition to the health needs of the older persons and that commits uh, itself to provide adequate health care facility so in fact uh, health is taken as one of the basic human rights health is taken as one of the human basic rights for them in this section we shall focus on the roles of uh, various stakeholders including counselors and social workers in ensuring the healthful longevity among the senior citizens so the government is government and uh, uh, certain organizations they are very much uh, clear in what they do to keep uh, or to ensure the healthful uh, longevity uh, among the senior citizens or the old age people so ensuring healthy and active life for senior citizens that is considered as the responsibility of not only uh, the immediate family members but also of the community so the community also uh, should uh, be responsible for the healthy life of uh, uh, the uh, senior citizen just as that the state the government or the non-governmental organizations, media, and most importantly, the elderly themselves pay their attention for their betterment. So it may be uh, restated that the preventive health care is not popular in Indian society. Still, not only the prevention is better than cure, so it is cheaper and economical too. So less amount of money is required uh, for the prevention of diseases than treatment. So it's a general fact and a cure of them. So in this regard, the following. Uh, interventions uh, are re very much required like for the elderly at preventive level so in the preventive level what we have to do is awareness create awareness about the common ailments of old age and their management should be created among the elderly uh, it is necessary that elderly to reduce their expectations in terms of health and fitness and come to terms with the fact that in old age it is normal to have a reduced energy, stamina, and presence of common ailments. And the third thing is that likewise, the need to be formed about the diet management in general, as well as specific situations, say in cases of diabetes, blood pressure, coronary heart diseases, etc. So in general, uh, awareness about the nutritious food that would prevent them from the number of deficiency disorders then aged people should be encouraged to adopt an active lifestyle as when not in use body parts tend to become dysfunctional so uh, the aged who do moderate amount of exercises remain remain mentally and physically agile and healthy and on restricted diet uh, that are able to enjoy uh, disease free life so older people should also be made aware of the exercises, both general and specific, uh, say for spondylitis and arthritis exercises are very uh, okay with them. And they can, by practicing a minimum amount of or average amount of exercises can make them uh, healthy functioning. Then for, for family and community, uh, uh, we can uh, see that there is a need to create awareness about the common old age problems uh, among these stakeholders too, uh, so that they can aid in preparing elderly to deal with the ailments. So family members, as primary caregivers, they require to change the dietary patterns of the aged depending upon their need. Family and community should perform active role uh, in encouraging elderly to adopt healthy lifestyle uh, 
that would help in preventing many of the old age related ailments or the problems then state what the state has to do with in, in this regard so as given commitment in the national policy on older persons the government of india uh, they should establish geriatric wards in almost all the tertiary hospitals and in clinics uh, the preference should be given for the health of old age people so geriatrics should be a part of nursing and uh, medical course so in fact the wide web of primary health centers system throughout the country should include the geriatric care so there should be mobile health care facility for the elderly to provide them uh, the needed medical help uh, at their doorstep itself okay uh, so we can see uh, the in each panchayat levels you know we can see that uh, these uh, care home care uh, services will be given or a home care consultation will be given by the doctors a small group of a doctor or a nurse okay and likewise early detection camps for ailments like cataract diabetes cancer blood pressure heart diseases etc uh, should be organized uh, expensively and uh, frequently so there are in many places in many villages many remote areas we can see that uh, the government is focusing on that okay so with some organizations or the hospitals they are conducting free medical camps to identify the ailments among the people especially for the old age people then media uh, when we think of the media so many organs of mass media like the print and electronic media having a vast coverage and reach should spread information about the health and nutrition requirements of the aged people so they can give uh, some good advices through the media they can give some inputs and training methods or even the dietary information through the media so if they spread that awareness definitely uh, it's a habit of the old age people to observe and keep on watching the news or the social medias or even the tv uh, so that uh, media can play a vital role in providing awareness through all these things then ngos but they have to do as one of the important stakeholders the ngos the non governmental organizations they should create awareness about the health in old age uh, old age related issues among the elderly family and community so they should uh, offer counseling services uh, regarding the proper management of the chronic uh, problems that they face then ngos are the main actors in providing awareness about healthy aging in the community then we focus on the mental health in old age uh, in earlier sections we have already seen many of the common but severely damaging the mental health problems among the elderly that could be uh, mostly affected uh, with their memory like the alzheimer's disease uh, then again schizophrenia neurosis and dementia then parkinson's etc so certain not so serious but still cannot be ignored mental health concerns uh, are rigidity of the behavior that become introvert loneliness death fear tension anxiety worry mourning etc okay so following interventions are required in the area of mental health of the elderly citizens what are the interventions that we can provide uh, for the uh will being of mental health among the old age so for the uh, elderly uh at a preventive level there are many things to be taken care of like the aged should be made aware of the common mental health problems so they should be offered uh, many options of uh, spiritual development in terms of uh, medi mediation uh meditation spiritual uh, techniques like meditation exercises and uh, camps for relaxation techniques uh attending regular religious uh, discourses often that brings uh, solace to the people including aged uh, they need to stress management workshops uh, cannot be ruled for aged people then engagement in various hobbies or roles activities through elderly clubs self help groups 
they would help them realize their leisure time creatively thereby increasing their well-being quotient okay so there are a lot of programs are uh, uh, presented and uh, established and uh, 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 conducted by many organizations and many ngos and many social work groups to engage the old age uh, in their own homes or they have got some clubs uh, old age senior citizens clubs are there so through which they try to make the old age people to engage to avoid some sort of mental disturbances that they face okay family and community their role okay to keep uh, to maintain their mental health problems so not only the aged but also the family members and the general community should be covered under the awareness campaigns about mental health problems among the older persons so it would uh, go in a way uh, it would go a long way in reducing stigma attached to it so there should be a wide dissemination of information regarding the signs and the symptoms of early detection so that the timely treatment can be provided care can be provided so further the family and the neighborhood can play important role in encouraging the elderly to adopt various hobbies to make them engaged mentally engaged uh, so this would enhance their well-being and uh, reduce incidence of mental ailments so the care would give us they should encourage the elderly uh, relatives to a change in lifestyle that to make uh, free from the stress and reduce expectations so they should make them able to adopt newer roles and stay happy and contented next the family and the neighborhood should remain guarded of any suicidal ideation among the aged as a silent uh, suicides are common in all days and often uh, go unnoticed so we have to understand that there are silent suicidal thoughts will be there they are very much common so they will keep uh, isolated uh, themselves from everyone and sometimes they have that tendency to commit suicide to end up with all the struggles that they undergo so we have to know we have to make them engaged uh, to avoid such uh, forms of thoughts okay then state governments uh their primary responsibility of the government that is to establish more mental health clinics wards and hospitals with special emphasis on geriatric mental health care so in many places it lacks it seems uh, the special training should be provided to mental health functionaries so as to detect and treat mental ailments that should be widely and frequently held then what would be the role of the media the print and electronic uh their responsibility uh in reducing the stigma attached to mental ailments because of which most cases go undetected and the victims suffer many falls without availing the treatment facilities the ngos also uh, do a great role in that so are the primary so the ngos considered are the primary uh, actors aware in generation awareness generation among the elderly their elderly their families and community the counseling also has a vast scope in proper cure and management of the mental disorders so that would be conducted the counseling regular counseling would be conducted through the ngos okay so these are the health related concerns mental health and health related uh, physical related con uh, concerns then we move on to the next unit that is the unit uh, three the characteristics of old age so we you know we were talking about the old age and uh, then old age as uh, disengagement just now we spoke about it they have to get engaged to avoid their problems so there are a lot of theories uh, based on their uh, old age and disengagement uh, old age as a continuity uh, all, for all these things there are some theoretical explanations like the role theory phenomenological theory etc all those things could be understood very clearly uh, by reading the text uh, this is uh, some theoretical explanations okay then we move on to the characteristics of old age we already spoke about the health 
okay so the most apparent change in old age is the physical aspect that is appearance uh, there is a greying of hair wrinkling of skin stooping gait uh, and such other changes okay then cultural norms of most societies associate beauty and charm with the youthhood so aging individual does not qualify any beauty norms so you may come across countless anti aging beauty products in the market convincing aging population groups to delay their old age and remain beautiful so some of the old age people they are not accepting that they are not maintaining or they are gray hair and all so they always focus on to maintain the beauty and their health so that they can uh, use the market products for that okay then um, in the previous discussions we have made it clear okay what are the health issues and all then social situation if you think of the social situation the demographic change known as a population aging that has resulted in a large section of population living up to old age so another demographic phenomenon that is called as feminization of aging that implies that women are outnumbering in older age uh, segments as their life expectancy is uh, more than their male counterparts so it means that the aging process is taking the phases of uh, females so in most uh, the next thing that we have to focus is in most third world countries including india social situation of elderly women is characterized by domestic violence and discrimination in access to education income food meaningful work health care property ownership social security measures and political power so these cumulative disadvantages that imply that the aged women are more likely to be poor and suffer disabilities than elderly in men so in patriarchal social structure the women are socialized to ignore their health and post born and deny treatment and early marriage multiple and uh, repeated pregnancies chronic malnutrition that take heavy role uh, heavy toll of their uh, health in old age so they do not have economic skills and control over the economic resources that's also uh, uh, an important information that we have to understand then a role a less state is a majority challenges faced by the elderly in a contemporary society so after loss of the roles due to retirement and settlement of the children in their respective careers and families the elderly they find themselves in void due to this role less state that means they do not have a role to perform so they have done with everything so that can mm, create some impact negatively so it significantly contributes to the loneliness uh, depression alienation and similar other negative feelings so uh, old age is the phase of human life cycle when elderly people generally have uh, ample free time but less of energy and money so here, the utilization of free time is a big challenge uh, not only for the old age people but also for the families state and civil society bodies yeah the religious teachings and the cultural values that play a crucial role in developing a uh, perception towards the old age and elderly do not not only among people in general but also among older people too so this perception influences the role and resource distribution for the elderly so we know that okay the religious institution they pay higher attention and focus to engage with the elderly by arranging some meetings or some prayer groups etc so they very much uh, uh, make them to god centered during this period and uh, we observe that only the old age people spend much time in the spiritual affairs like uh, that uh, is related to their daily living okay so they are fond of their insisting us to go to the temple or even to the churches or even the mosque etc so they are spending time to read the religious scriptures than the other uh, age group because they do not have anything else to do they feel that okay they are about to so they they want to make their soul more closer to the uh, creator or the god what they believe okay 
then the economic security regarding that the old age uh, often reduces income and increase economic insecurity so almost two thirds of the elderly in india are living in economic deprivation and are either destitute or near uh, the state of destitution so in the present world if we closely observe we can see that more often elderly parents are dependent on their children for their upkeep especially in the middle and lower income group families and consequently their earlier ascribed status as waned so the migration of the children so abroad or in metropolitan cities of india for employment purposes they leave elderly parents to uh, to fend for themselves and make them economically and socially vulnerable so more often uh, than not uh, aged women in india they are economically dependent on male members of the family and hardly on property uh, they are one of the most economically vulnerable group among the elderly who who the uh, women aged women in our communities the economic dependence on children uh, put elderly parents at risk of abuse and exploitations uh, increasing cost of medicine and availing healthcare facility for elderly relatives often pinch uh, the family budget and tend to tense the intergenerational relationships okay so all these are something related to the economic security then there could be some international and national response to safeguard the rights of the or the health of the uh, life of the old age people so the national machinery should be established or strengthened to ensure that humanitarian needs and the developmental potential of the aged are appropriately addressed then there should be expansion of researches focusing on the demographics epidemiological biological social and economic aspects of aging so the community based or institutional care systems they should be established or strengthened that provide the necessary health and social services for the frail elderly with limited or no support so the organizations and associations of the elderly that must ensure their active involvement in the policy and program development uh, that should be encouraged and promoted so training in gerontology and geriatrics should be promoted to ensure that the policy makers researchers and practitioners have an adequate knowledge of issues related to the aging so in 1991 the united nations has laid down a set of five principles as guidelines for uh, upsharing and aged society as independence they should get independent then participation uh, they have to participate in each and every activities that they were doing before then the care should be given fulfillment and the dignity of all the people so 20 years after the vienna assembly the second world assembly on aging was held in madrid spain in april uh, 2002 so it reviewed the progress and suggested new plan of action so india is one of the signatories signatories uh, to this new plan of action so this plan among others aims at creating a society for all ages okay so delineated briefly are the three priority areas of the mandatory international plan of action here first one is older persons and development so the issues highlighted under this priority are active participation in society and development uh, work and the aging labor force rural development migration and urbanization then access to knowledge education and training so integrational uh, solidarity eradication of poverty and finally income security social protection and poverty prevention so all these are the older persons and development uh, they address the issues like that then advancing health and well being into old age that could be the other uh, plan uh, thing main thing included in the plan of action by the uh uh mandated international plan uh that includes the important issues of uh, concern under this priority uh are the health promotion and well being throughout the life course uh, universal and equitable access to healthcare services 
then older persons and HIV AIDS, the training for care providers, mental health and needs of the older people or older people's persons and disabilities. Then again, the third thing uh, focused on the priorities given under the uh, Factors like housing and living environment, care, abuse and violence, images of aging. So national level, uh, the Ministry of Social Justice Empowerment in India, they're coinciding with the International Year of Older Persons in 1999, announced the National Policy for Older Persons, that's NPOP, highlights uh, it has got certain highlights like the government of India reaffirms its commitment to ensure the well-being of older persons in a holistic manner. So uh, they are focusing the economic and social stability of the old age people and the NPOP uh, delineates itself into the following major aspects like the financial security, health security, recognizing shelter as basic human need, education or information need, welfare and institutional care, then the protection of life and property of older pe people, then training of human resource to the care for older people, then again they give insistence uh, to the media to aware uh, to create awareness among the public about all these issues so service for the elderly that could be our next uh, area a snapshot is given here so what other things could be done what all services should be provided for them okay so what are they uh, we can highlight the services like the national old age pension schemes Annapurna scheme, integrated uh, programs uh, for the older persons, then construction of multi-service centers and old age homes, daycare centers, old age homes, uh, then social legislations for the elderly. So all these things are some of the major services that could be uh, provided. So national old age pension scheme, uh, the central assistance at the rate of rupees 200 per month that is given to a state for the destitute elderly who are 65 years and above. So, however, there is a wide uh, variation in the coverage and amount of pension given to the older people. Some states have merged state and the central pension and are giving uh, the raised amount to the needy elderly, while in others have either two different sets of beneficiaries for state pension and central pension schemes or have erased their state scheme. Then Annapurna scheme. It is a complementary to national old age pension scheme and is uh, given to the 20 percentage of those elderly who are eligible for old age pension but not getting in this destitute elderly uh, get so they are focusing on the destitute elderly and they get 19 kg of food grains per month then integrated program for the older persons so in this scheme the financial assistance is provided to the non-governmental organizations, autonomous bodies, uh, educational institutions, etc., uh, where 90 percentage of the project cost for setting up uh, old age home, daycare center, mobile Medicare units, or multi-service center, depending upon the needs of the elderly in that community or that area, must be provided. Then construction of multi-service centers and old age homes. So under this scheme, the funds are given to the Panchayat Raj institutions. So the service is provided through the Panchayat Raj institutions, a union tertiary and administrations of uh, self-help groups of elderly people for construction of old age homes for multi-service centers. Then daycare centers, it is also called the hobby uh, clubs or activity centers recreational centers or, or golden age centers so these centers are run by voluntary organizations in almost all the states with the financial assistance to the ministry of social justice and empowerment so they act as antidote to the loneliness feeling of neglect and alienation of the elderly uh, and provide them opportunity for the interaction with peers uh, creative use of time and catharsis of emotions the variations of emotions so these centers have services like reading a room 
indoor games, medical checkup, spiritual discourse and lectures and vocational uh, activities. Then old age home and the service. So there are over 600 old age homes in the country run by government. Uh, NGOs including by religious charitable trust or NGOs with government support. So these homes offer free subsidized or paid services. So the range of services includes lodging, board, healthcare and recreational facilities catering to the needs of the elderly belonging to the different strata of the society. So there are some uh, private uh, old age homes as well or there are old age homes uh, run under the uh, guidance of the religious institutions. Uh, so we can see that there are many old age homes in and around our society or our state uh, or even our uh, nation because a lot of people are getting, uh, what do you call, uh, separated uh, from the family when they are in the old age. So this apart following services are also offered to the older people like free legal aid, income tax uh, uh, rebates, national institution of uh, social uh, defense. The Ministry of SJE is providing training to a cadre of professionals who would work as health attendants or at various levels in the geriatric care project and services. Then pre-retirement uh, uh, counseling though available only to select few government and PSUS. Then advocacy and networking through elderly club and pressure groups, network of RWA, the police and elderly to prevent or curb crime against the elderly. Then concessions in travel, uh, air, railway, road, etc. Then seats uh, reserved in trades, buses and other public conveyances. So, all these are the certain innovative civil society initiatives are uh, adopt a granny program or grandparents day all these are some of the uh, innovative civil society initiatives and also elderly are uh, encouraged to participate in economically gainful activities so that they remain independent and self-reliant so schools also are taking initiatives for attitudinal changes of students uh, thereby enhancing amicable integrational relationship with the older people so there is a significant role of media in enhancing intergenerational cordial relations so also a lot of research and training in the field of geriatrics uh, and gerontology are taking place in educational institutions and NGOs. Okay, then we move on to the next area that is changing role and adjustment. That is the last uh, fourth unit in uh, the last module. So if you have got any doubts till the uh, explained Projects, you can ask me any doubts. We have got one more hour. So within that time, we will be able to finish the units and uh, the entire subject. So we continue with the unit four, changing role and adjustment. So here, um, the traditional roles in the family and community could be understood. Uh, in regarding the joint family system, agrarian economy, the socialization of children, gender angle and community, and even regarding the culture and religion. Okay, so we have to have a brief uh, explanation or discussion about all these things, the traditional roles in the family and community. Uh, regarding the joint family system, so in the then society that means in the previous times the society or the joint family system was prevalent characterized by three or more generations that is living together under one roof and cook food in one uh, hearth that means in one uh, place okay so the eldest male used to, to head the household and control the family property that time so individual earnings are pooled and appropriated by the head of the family as per the needs of the family members so here the elderly would take decisions in all the individual and family matters okay so they were the controllers or the decision makers in the family uh, age and sex were the definite defining principles thus the elders would have no more authority and power than youngers 
even if the earnings and personal capabilities of the youngers were more and males would be considered as superior than females the families will be as considered was considered superior than the individual wishes and the dreams and interdependence and cooperation uh, bear well ingrained through the socialization so the joint family system it was uh, very much effective during that time you know for everything and uh, every family matters the person he considered to be the decision maker breadwinner it could be male and he was giving the full control of the family then the agrarian economy that's also the traditional when we think regarding the agrarian economy we can understand the tradition role uh, the joint family acted as an economic unit and the uh, know how of the elderly were uh, relevant to the agrarian economic system so the older persons were consulted in matters like when to sow seeds so regarding the farming so when to sow seeds how to do weeding and prevent pests cultivation and storage of crops and so on so they are very much aware of the weather or the climatic conditions everything related to farming and all uh, all the influences so definitely they were the people who give or who were got consulted with others in regarding that uh, uh, aspects then socialization of the children in traditional societies the elderly would play crucial roles in socialization of the children especially in value include inculcation and skill imparting so in ancient time system of schooling for education was available only to select few so a large majority uh, of children sought education within their families from their elders especially in the supervision of grandparents so in strict gender boundaries young girls would attain uh, dexterity in household chores like cooking home management embroidery work tailoring etc so while boys would be trained in agricultural work or family business based on their uh, strength and uh, weaknesses they were given practice in areas so gender angle so it is however doubtful that the aged women enjoyed the same privilege uh, as did elderly men so nevertheless they would enjoy authority over the younger females of the household so their status would increase especially when their son brings home the uh, bahu the used to act as the mediator educator doctor and consultant in various uh, day to day family matters then regarding the community apart from the community the community also played an important role in ensuring the social acceptance care and well being of the elderly so invariably the uh, punch members used to be elderly Uh, to be the elderly of the community so they would resolve the familial and property conflicts and uh, would take decisions regarding the welfare of the village so this shows the high level of acceptance and status the elderly enjoyed so previously uh, it was practiced like that and we have seen in the movies not now in the movies uh, that is very much related to the villages uh, in the they are the elders where the Uh, leader of that particular community and they're gi- giving orders and all then culture the ancient and medieval societies were majorly a uh, past oriented where aged were valued for their wisdom based experiences and they were taken as meaningful links to the tradition okay so to know about the tradition um uh, a old age person can help more than a book okay so they can give their own fresh experiences related to that from their own life then they were evaluated to their role in ensuring the historical continuity especially with the religious connotations in traditional societies wisdom was identified with uh, worldly experiences and the longer one lived the more experiences one was supposed to have gained about the worldly matters so as a, a very few elderly reached mature old age uh, they were respected by the people for their conventional wisdom okay then religion uh, for the religion as an instrument to social control 
that has played an important role in enforcing the support and care for the elderly. So it preaches that as it is a duty of the parents to care for their offspring, in old age, the children have to serve their parents. So it places caring for the parents as a dharma on duty of or duty of children and goodwill of all the parents that will bring prosperity in the family. Is it true? Okay. Uh, thus, cultural, social, and religious imperatives uh, that enjoy upon the younger members to look after their elderly relatives. So, the religion also you focus on the uh, caring of uh, old age people. Then, changing roles in modern times. So, we know that in short uh, span of time, there especially after independence. Many forces of social change like urbanization, industrialization, modernization, and change in the political system that have influenced the situation of the elderly. So if we uh, examine, we can see uh, the social forces like the alternative family patterns, change in the economic rules, value system, migration, the gendered uh, terrains, technological advancements, economic dependence, then urban, rural, uh, uh, local, or the culture everywhere. Okay, so please, uh, the enough uh, explain, uh, explanation is given in the text. Please do uh, read and understand it. Okay, so then we move on to the next area that is implication on self and others. Hmm. That could be understood by the intra psychic implications or the implications on the social adjustment impact on family and neighborhood uh, then the impact on the nation and the society so if we focus on the uh, thing in psychic implications we may be able to understand that uh, the role change that happened that make uh, a lot of uh, changes in their mental functioning because when they are having a role that was controlling others or they considered as the breadwinners or the pillar of the family, everybody was loyal to them. So they might have enjoyed such sort of uh, uh, activities. And later, when they are um, becoming older and their productivity, they have lost. So they are not uh, considerably uh, having the place that they had previously so that may create some sort of uh, sadness or even stress or strain among their psychic functioning so that can create a lot of imbalances in that then implications of social adjustment so individuals relationship with uh, his or her own self uh, that to a large extent that determine the relationship with the social world. So here, a person who is in frustration and not at ease with himself or herself tend to engage in incongruent interactions with their, the family or in the neighborhood. So aged people, they exhibit happiness, have favorable attitudes towards the self and others. They show constructive, adjustive patterns and handle difficult situations in stride, are constant to construed uh, as having favorable qualities for good adjustments. So the impact on family and neighborhood, if we think in that aspect, so with increasing number. OK, so we were talking about the implications of, on social adjustment. Uh, that we have already covered then impact on family or neighborhood. So with the increasing uh, number or proportion of the elderly in the population, so the care wing would be uh, pertinent for uh, almost all the families. So in contemporary world, caregiving issues have many challenges uh, like uh, in economic terms, uh, most of the families at middle and lower middle class so the maintaining elderly parents become a naughty issue. So in old age expenses on medicine and availing health care facility are eight times more than those at the age of 30 years. So here they feel a difficulty to spend money for the uh, medication or the medical affairs of the old age people. Uh, then if we think of 
uh, the impact on the nation and society. So the welfare state like India, it has a commitment to itself that it will take care of its elderly citizens who have uh, significantly contributed. So in their own capacities to the growth and development of the nation in their prime time. Okay, so they have influenced a lot. Uh, they are uh, they have done a lot for the betterment of the nation as well when they are having uh, a prime time. Okay, so the World Health Organization has given the slogan: "Care of the elderly is homebound." Okay, so in Indian setting. It is not only the consonance with the our cultural root, but also economical. So here we would look into the role of counselors and social workers in realizing the slogan that is to uh, care of the elderly is homebound. And we have to take the following initiatives like counseling, giving counseling that has a lot of scope in establishing amicable integrational intergenerational uh, relations. The counselors can hold workshops for enhancing uh, social functioning of the elderly by work on uh, attitudinal change if required and aiding them to reduce their expectations from self and significant others. Then counseling is required to deal with abuse and exploitation on the elderly, both explicit and implicit and perceived and real. Then the family members they can be trained in caregiving issues and time to time counseling and encouragement to deal with the burnouts to the caregivers is a must. So involvement of the school system for facilitating value inculcation for respect to the elderly is required. So there is a co uh, scope of advocacy with the media so as to depict elderly in a positive manner that would uh, restrict negative stereotypes against the elderly. So likewise, the advocacy and uh, negotiations with the government that are required to establish systems like daycare centers, recreational centers, elderly clubs, uh, provide counseling services to elderly at family counseling centers and initiate the uh, family enrichment programs through the non-governmental organizations so then social workers they should also encourage the government to provide incentive to the families like uh, uh, tax tax uh, rebate priority in getting the house or shop etc so who are taking care of their elderly relatives so there is a vast scope of preparing elderly to take take up the new roles to adopt active and healthy aging strategies through the pre-retirement counseling. Then social workers can play active role in framing and implementing the social legislations that mean to protect the interest and well-being of the senior citizens in the country. So thus we should be able to understand that there is a huge role, huge scope of social work practice in this geriatric setting or in this particular area. Then concept of active aging. If we understand the meaning, definitely aging is to be a positive experience. Uh, long and life must be accompanied by continuing opportunities for the health, participation and security. Thus, the World Health Organization, the WHO has adopted the term active aging to express the process of achieving the vision, okay, achieving this vision. So active aging is the process of optimizing opportunities for health, participation, and security in order to enhance the quality of life of the uh, old age people. Then active aging applies to both individuals and population groups. It allows people to realize their potential for physical, social, and uh, mental well-being throughout the life course and to participate in society according to their needs. Uh, their desires and their capacities that by providing uh, them with the adequate protection, security and care when they require assistance. There are certain determinants of active aging. Uh, according to WHO, there are uh, the WHO uh, has given uh, certain determinants like the determinants related to health and social service system, the determinants related to physical environment. So the determinants are related to the social environment, economic determinants, behavioral determinants, determinants related to the personal factors, 
uh, culture and gender as cross cutting determinants then there could be some policy response okay so if you think of all these determinants uh, related to the health and the social service system we can see that uh, the focus should be on the health promotion disease prevention and equitable access to the quality primary health care and the uh, long term care so health and social services need to be integrated here okay health and social services could be connected so they coordinated and cost effective so there must be no age discrimination in the provision of services and service providers need to treat people of all ages with dignity and respect okay it also includes effective mental health services for the elderly so if we think of the physical environment there the determinants could be so there is a need to work on the infrastructure that is elderly friendly so like how the height slabs in the kitchen slopes along with the stairs etc that should be uh, prepared and structured uh, for the convenience of the elderly people so clean water and clean air along with the other basic uh, amenities they must taken care for the elderly then determinants related to the social environment uh, that includes the so social support uh, if we think social support is an anti dot against the most of social problems like elderly abuse uh, loneliness and alienation so if willing elderly should have the options to acquire and enhance the literacy and education and other opportunities for the skill upgradation here the elderly willing to take up jobs should have opportunities for the same depending upon their capacity and interest the economic determinants uh, as per who the elderly should be given opportunity to participate uh, in the workforce even after crossing a stipulated retirement age so those aged people who are economically deprived the, it is the possibility of the state to provide uh, it is the responsibility of the state to provide a comprehensive social protection also income of the elderly should be protected against the forgery and other malpractices behavioral determinants the adoption of healthy lifestyle and actively participating in one's own care go a long way in ensuring active aging so elderly engaged in appropriate physical activity healthy eating uh, not smoking and using alcohol and medications wisely in older age are able to prevent diseases and functional decline uh, extend a longevity and enhance their quality of their life then determinants related to the personal factors biological process in old age is genetically determined however the health and the disease uh, for an individual is the result of a combination of uh, uh, genetics environment lifestyle nutrition and to an important extent chance so elderly individuals can uh, smartly prevent and delay the onset of many chronic uh, genetically uh, determined ailments like the diabetes heart diseases alzheimer's disease and certain cancers by bringing desired changes in the uh, eating patterns and lifestyle so focus should be given to have a proper diet plan uh, so that they can control the diseases the said diseases into a great extent the psychological will be greatly influence the physical health conditions or coping patterns and social adjustments uh, influence healthy and active aging so the culture and gender uh, as cross cutting determinants here the who states that the cultural values and traditions determine to a large extent how a given society views older people and the aging process so when societies are are more likely to attribute the symptoms of diseases to the aging process so they are likely uh, less likely to provide uh, prevention early detection and appropriate uh, treatment services thus uh, while planning or intervening in uh, any social context that's embedded the cultural norms and values that must be taken into the account okay so the, all these are the determinants uh, then the next area that we have to focus is 
uh, an important one for us that is geriatric counseling okay we know what counseling is <clears throat> and we know what are the skills that to be used in counseling so when we practice counseling with uh, the geriatric people definitely uh, it is another area another specialized area where we have to focus a lot of uh, things to taken care of okay so for that we should know we should have the basic understanding of what aging is so we know aging what does it mean or what happens when we age uh, aging has got a lot of inferences uh, among other thing amongst the other things it is inevitably leading to the physical decline that may be due to the poor diet lack of exercises lifestyle so as a person ages so they will experience muscle mass decreases cells uh, decay the dna strand in our cells becomes damaged that ultimately leads to the failure of the cells energy production etc then energy reserves will reduce the immune systems that will have uh, a reduced capacity to fight against the diseases the organs and the bodily systems such as heart and lungs will become less uh, efficient so aging thus therefore the result of the damage to the cells in our bodies so it's a natural process so we cannot ever or escape from such a sort of uh, process so however the speed at which a person ages will be affected by their outlook on life and personal experiences and circumstances so it will vary from person to person definitely then however this is not necessarily a negative experience as person loses in some areas so they may gain in others they may learn uh, patience understanding wisdom and experiences all of which may improve their lives regardless of any physical changes so some thoughts on aging that focuses on the geriatric concern is hidden uh, contrary difficulty and is underestimated then number of elderly in developing countries is rising old age uh, is considered as a stigmatized condition so uh, traditional care is under strain and feels that institutionalization is uh, the alternative the problem of care burden is not acknowledged properly so health care systems are not sensitive to the needs of the senior citizens so in short we can tell that what happens when we eat we will get a poor diet lack of exercises lifestyle uh, cell decay energy reserves will reduce so all those things will happen in the aging time then there are some certain she uh, theories on the aging like uh, damage based theories and programmed theories that will give some uh, clear cut understanding about the aging then the challenges in old age what could be the challenges in old age there are a lot of crises and challenges of aging such as retirement dependency or old age that bring a person face to face with their fitnesses so creating anxiety and raising questions related to death so these are the times of intense uncertainty uh, which can lead either to the personal growth through a person process of adaptation and the upgrading of one's self image so or to a dysfunctional approach and an increase in the misery uh, through resistance to alteration so the old age will uh, with its inescapable series of bereavement and loss that's a difficult time of life and is often a cause of distress on both an individual and a family level then what are the uh, changes that could be uh, presently seen in old age they are titled like the physiological challenges in old age the psychosocial challenges in old age then the social challenges and the economic challenges so when we think about the physiological challenges in old age so we can see that there are universal physiological and psychological changes uh, that occur with aging so it is said that one third functional uh, decline is uh, due to the aging so one third due to the disease and one third due to the uh, disuse okay so these are the three areas where the dysfunctioning or the 
major changes that are happening in psychologically. So all our uh, organs undergo aging process, thereby the responsive uh, response to the injury and in self decreases. The skin becomes more fragile, hair follicles reduce and the hair becomes friable. So fat around face reduces and exaggerated facial facial uh, features appear taste buds and olfactory cells reduce along with the vision and hearing impairment then there will be atrophy and loss of neurons so it may take a long time to sleep and may wake up in between the sleep so similarly there will be changes in the cardiovascular system respiratory system oral cavity gastrointestinal tract renal system endocrine muscles and the bones so circulation system and the thermoregulations that means the tolerance to the heat reduces so every condition is happening there the possibility for infections in different organs also increases with the aging so psychosocial challenges that may uh, include uh, or that may happen as uh, physiological changes in aging process the socially and psychosocially in aged undergoes a lot of alternations and adjustments so aging changes the way a person feels things and behaviors i repeat aging changes uh, the way a person feels things and behaviors so the feelings and the thoughts uh, center on managing growing disability so unlike in the previous years he may become more cautious about the learning and may need more time to integrate their response uh, turn out to be less capable of dealing with the new material and less accurate so there may be a general reduction in speed of reasoning and creative achievements so they might have a poor recent memories but better remote memories so their recall ability recalling ability that is affected more by age than the recognition so the vocabulary deterioration that is a way uh, that's very slight and that becomes very slight and learning new words is infrequent so the mental rigidity that tends uh, to be uh, more pronounced with the uh, aging so they believe all the values and the ways of doing things are better so they may become increasingly more preoccupied with the themselves that is egocentric or self uh, centered so this self centeredness that may contribute uh, to unfavorable social attitude that means uh, he may withdraw from the social environment or it may be voluntary or involuntary it happens then the social challenges in old age behavior of elderly is affected by social norms and the social environments so the retirement widowhood isolation deficit in the personal resources and or coping skills the physical illness economic and physical dependency loss of uh, the social status generation gap major role changes changes in family and living arrangements all these can be contributing the factors then when we think of the economic challenges we have to understand that as individuals live in longer and into the substantial age if we say 75 years and over they need more exhaustive and extended care so which in turn may rise the financial strain in the family inadequate income is uh, a major problem of elderly in india we have to understand that predominantly in rural areas the families uh, suffer from economic crunch uh, as their livelihoods do not produce income during the year so in india more than 90 percent of the total labor forces are engaged in the unorganized sector so they retire from the productive employment without any financial security like pension and other post retirement benefits so women are more likely to depend on others because of the lesser literacy and higher incidence of widowhood among them so the most weak and uh, are those who do not own any fruitful assets uh, they have little or no savings or income from the investment made earlier so they have no pension on retirement benefits uh, they are not taken care of by the children so such group of people are having a very uh, struggling life uh, regarding the economic uh, area 
so it is said that a man's active uh, wage earning period is barely more than the 45 years but today's condition is that uh, he must earn adequate in this time to pay towards the maintenance of aged parents rare and educate uh, children uphold his family as a standard of living and save enough in the form of insurance or absolutely safe uh, investments to deliver a modest income until death so if he survives his working period so there are if we examine or if we observe the senior citizens life in uh, overseas definitely we can see that they are earning uh, and they are keeping a good amount of money to take care of them when they become aged. So they will put that money into the account and they will go to any kind of the care homes. They will stay there. They have got uh, an advocate uh, or a legal person to help him to proceed with the activities. And he will be coordinating all the activities. And when they are uh, becoming aged and dependent, definitely they are the homes will take care of them and the money which he already reserved for that will be used uh, through the uh, his legal personality and uh, likewise the functioning is uh, uh, running forward you know so that's a major thing that we have to uh, understand and we have to follow when we think of the uh, our community people old age people so most of the people are in struggles. We we have to agree that. But in all, uh, countries like UK and Canada, you know, there are people. They even they are becoming self-reliant by taking care of their activities by their own spendings, uh, by their own money. Okay, so that's something we have to appreciate them in that context because they do not need any support from the uh, children. Okay, so they have once they uh, their children is getting married or completed their education, they separate. They just separate from the uh, parents and they'll start to constitute a family as their own and their own life. Okay, no complaints, no constraints will be there in, th in this regard. And the people know that's the situation or that's the uh, style that they follow. That's the culture that they have in their uh, life. Okay. Then if we move on to the next thing, uh, areas where the intervention is needed. Okay. What are the areas where the intervention could be given to uh, have a better lifestyle for the aged people? Uh, the areas could be the isolation feelings. Uh, we have to isolate the feelings, the feelings that they are alone uh, in an island and the feeling of loneliness. So the most important feeling is the isolation feelings. That is the, uh, we have to avoid the loneliness. So intervention should be given in that area. Then feelings without any focus or uh, direction. Then feelings of worthlessness of life, dealing with others, expectations of them and on them. Then relationship issues are there emotional and psychological difficulty difficulties so the intervention on the mild to moderate depression then again the intervention on the response to trauma and crisis situations then to avoid the physical ailments to family adjustment issues to the uh, confront with the sexual difficulties the death of the spouse and significant others uh, then the life cycle development issues so all these are the areas where intervention could be uh, given okay then the counselor uh, can help a lot uh, in many ways uh, among the senior citizens they uh, counselors can help the senior citizens uh, to live healthier and more productive uh, lives by tackling uh, all these issues of the time so they can always support the seniors to recognize and successfully employ the various social services and programs that are available to them so they offer direct assistance like providing family support services and facilitating the uh, coordination of uh, other services then as part of the multidisciplinary team so he can make assessment on the diagnosing some of the aging diseases like dementia or even alzheimer's so helping them to meet their legal and civil responsibilities so availing welfare services adequate to them so we have to make them aware of the existing services which can be used for their betterment so most of the people or the old age people or senior citizens they lack the awareness about the schemes or the programs existing uh, in the society 
to safeguard their rights and their uh, to avoid their ailments. So availing welfare services to adequate to the time, then uh, supporting to make decisions on important matters, especially of end of life matters and property issues, etc. So what happens when they die? So they should get a clear picture on uh, regarding their property, what could be done or what could happen after their uh, life, uh, uh, what will happen to their property, etc. All these things to be taken care of. Then supporting to uh, to take the decisions regarding that, then making assessment of in-home personal needs of the elderly and preparing individualized person-centered care plan could be there. Then coordinating high quality of uh, home care uh, services and evaluating uh, appropriate housing alternatives, then making excellent uh, referral for all the types of community resources then referring appropriate care management services, short term and long term services should be uh, given and the information regarding the same should be uh, given to the old age people. Then counseling the caregivers of the elderly on important matters, especially those with dementia. So you know what dementia is, it's a neurological condition that mainly affects the ability to memorize. Uh, the, the functioning of the memory okay so a person with dementia they may have a lot of struggles to recollect uh, about their daily routine so sometimes they forget to uh, do their daily needs uh, or daily activities including uh, physical cleanliness or even uh, to take the food or the medications, etc., etc., etc. Okay, a number of issues are there. Then, uh, suggesting them to take preventive measures for healthy aging in controlling diseases, taking healthy diet and doing adequate exercises, both physical and mental. Then, support the local and long distance relatives in need of assistance. So, working with employees who are dealing with the aging parents issues to minimize the interference with their work productivity. All these are the areas where a social worker or a counselor has to play a lot. Then there are certain areas where counseling is most needed, uh, like the depression, okay, in this area. So depression, so many older people can experience the feelings of isolation and loneliness. So they can feel a cut off uh, uh, from the society and think that they are absolutely alone. So that feeling maybe that will manifest into depression and sometimes they think of they will be having some sort of suicidal ideation or ending their life. Okay, so depression, that could be an area where the counseling is most needed. Then anxiety. So older people, they have uh, apprehensions concerning their own health and well-being. Uh, so what will happen to them? Anxiety will be there. So they may also become concerned about the practical and financial issues. So many older people, they worry about they will cope a day-to-day -day basis. So, so what will, how I will uh, meet the daily needs or what will happen to me, whether I will die soon or not. So all these are some of the areas the anxiety plays. Okay, so that's also an important area. Counseling is needed. Then uh, loneliness that I've, we've already spoken about that many older people can experience intense feeling of loneliness. So this can happen particularly when an older person remains living in their own home after the death of a spouse. Then fears about the future. Some older people have uncertainties and they have worries regarding their future and whether they are not, they can remain in living independently in their own homes, etc., etc., etc. are the problems. Then awareness of own morality. So often when older people have experience with the loss of a spouse, friends and family, so they have a greater sense of their own mortality when they will die. 
okay so they have got a fear of death in that context then bereavement many older people have been uh, with their spouse or partner of a considerable amount of time and it is likely that each partner will have a strong attachment to the other so when a spouse dies it is often difficult for the widow or the widower to adjust so that's a great loss for him a great bereavement for him so also as we get older the news of deaths of close friends and family member increases uh, and so the older people can often feel uh, excess of grief and anxiety of death, death as well then other losses like as well as bereavement there are a number of other losses that uh, older people can experience that include the loss of independence the loss of health the loss of mobility mobility the loss of uh, family home etc then geriatric counseling that is the major area so counseling we know that it's a process that enables a person uh, uh, to sh sort out his issues to address his issues and to reach a decision affecting their life often counseling that is sort out times of uh, revolt of or crisis so it need not be so however as counseling can also help uh, uh, the old age in any time of their situations or their life so the counseling required at the old age is call uh, is called the old age counseling or geriatric counseling so counseling with the geriatric people that's also is a process carried out in a simple one-to-one -one social environment in which uh, the counselor who is professionally competent in uh, psychological skills and knowledge that seeks to assist the aged people uh, by method uh, appropriate to the latest need that means their own needs so it should be within the environment of the total person programs uh, to learn how to put the understanding into uh, effect in relation to more clearly apparent and realistically defined goals to the end that the geriatric people may become as happier become a happier and more productive member of the society so geriatric counseling uh, is also professional geriatric care management for supporting the older adults and their families or other concerned parties in genuinely evaluating needs and creating a personalized plan tailored to be best meet the unique needs of an individual. So geriatric counselors assist uh, older adults with choosing from the wide array of uh, social and health uh, services and programs available to them. So geriatric counselors uh, are care managers for older adults. So they help to facilitate family support, provide direct care, and coordinate care from the professional system. So there are some geriatric social work initiatives. So increased number of older people and a continued lengthening of the lifespan highlight the need to expand the counseling services uh, among the older adults, So, which is a population often being overlooked and underrepresented uh, in receiving the psychological aid. There are geriatric care management. So through which the overall um, it has got its own goal like uh, uh, through the counseling practices the geriatric counselor is to improve the lives of the older adults by increasing access to the program aimed at the assisting them older adults uh, they might have many issues and concerns related to their housing transportation finances or social interactions so geriatric care management can avoid all those concerns and uh, they can support the geriatric people to have a feasible uh, maintenance of their issues. Then to provide care and support services for all the adults, the geriatric counselor themselves must first become very familiar with the adult and the individual illness. Uh, after gathering enough information and adequate knowledge regarding the older adults lifestyle, it is the geriatric counselor uh, then support to improve a comprehensive care plan that includes the possible services the individual requires. The services include home cleaning services, crisis support services, or any of the following like the handling insurance claims, legal aid services, money management and bill paying services, then hospice care management. 
then geriatric counselors always take up initiatives to visit the clients so that they can ensure that their needs are met uh, detecting any variations uh, which might require for the individual's need for a new program or services so depending on the health condition say after a sudden stroke or a fall uh, the need of the older adults might change and the geriatric counselors must be willing to uh, set up transportation services or grocery delivery uh, these are some examples for that then apart from all these things the influences or the uh, importance of geriatric counselor they have got again some of the specific roles uh, like uh, prerequisites for an effective geriatric counseling they have to create it they have to develop a human approach non-judgmental attitude holistic approach then holistic uh, respect to the diversity of the older population developing independence while diminishing dependence so self-determination could be practiced uh, then family-centered approach has to be used then they have to develop a lot of linkages as their counselors they should be able to develop the linkage to appropriate the accessible and acceptable services so counseling they have promotes the effective coordinated and human operating of the systems that uh, provide resources and services to older people and their families then there is a role of the group counseling uh, group counseling is another area uh, that can neutralize some of the potential problems of the traditional one-to-one -one counseling such as the counselors on this uh, unresolved feelings towards the aging and death as well as the age bias so the group counseling uh, encourages supportive sharing and social interactions that may help to replace the loss of family or work contacts so the uh, old age clubs or the leisure activities of the old age people can be organized in that way so the elderly can share past experiences related to the younger people and uh, reinforce appropriate the social roles of aging peer counseling programs are often effective then there could be a work setting of a geriatric counseling so there are the counseling is provided through the geriatric counseling centers home setting is there then work sites are there then nourishing uh, nursing homes are there retirement communities or hospitals are there geriatric and uh, memory clinics are there so instead of government agencies or hospice programs are there law firms insurance companies doctors banks and even employee assistance programs are there then senior citizen centers or the adult daycare centers are there then various advocacy groups all these through all these uh, departments or the settings the geriatric counseling e provided then there are certain uh, barrier to geriatric counseling uh, um so that has to be understood uh especially with the uh during that time they have to face a lot of stigma uh the uh, lack of ignorance could be there okay their services may not be recognized by the people or the settings or even the society so all those things are considered as some of the barriers then another topic is geriatric social workers so a geriatric social worker is a professional social worker with expertise and training in senior healthcare issues such as aging assisted living nursing home and end of life care so they might also be uh, referred to as a geriatric care managers uh, we have already uh, discussed about it so like most social workers uh, these geriatric care managers work as part of the care team so along with the home health aides the physicians nurse uh, volunteers and other specialities these gcms the geriatric care managers work with health care professionals to facilitate the health care for the old age people so uh, these geriatric care managers may work with a large number of patients they are accountable for providing social and uh, psychological help and services and support to a patient and the patient's family so they may also do advocacy uh, work in the community and offer classes or rating training to other social workers and volunteers so for assisted living and nursing home care uh, a geriatric care manager might offer supporting with the alteration to the long-term care aiding necessary paperwork 
then helping the legal and financial matters, advanced care planning, then living wills, uh, advanced directive, uh, then counseling, acting as a link between a patient, family members, and healthcare staff. Then for end of life or hospice care, uh, a social worker might offer counseling for transition to end of life care, both for the family and patient, then helping with the recording uh, life stories, uh, help the patients say their goodbyes through writing letters or phone calls, videos. So all these things are well executed uh, to the over uh, means uh, countries like uh, UK and Canada, not exactly here, but we can have all the possibilities, but it is not following properly. Uh, that is a, a thing that I have to tell. Okay, notice here. Then social workers with the geriatric training and expertise improve their lives of older adults. They have got a lot of stress that has to be confronted. Uh, the stress could be uh, stress of the caregivers could be so caring of a loved one experiencing dementia or other age related problems is a selfless and loving measure. But it also brings a lot of challenges to the caregiver. So sometimes it is known as the second patient by geriatric counselors or caregivers experience difficulty in watching the loved one struggles with the growing older and need help from the counselors to juggle increased responsibilities. So here these counselors are not only aware of the need of older adults, but also ensure that caregivers know how to effectively manage the stress offering uh, a number of suggestions for stress management. So geriatric counselors are able to connect the care caregivers suffering with the depression with the mental health practitioners who specialize in depression. But in many situations, simply uh, voicing concerns and problems to geriatric counselors, they help to reduce caregivers' stress. So talking with a geriatric counselor also gives care uh, givers needed affirmation for the their extraordinary effort. Thus, the geriatric counselor also discusses stress management techniques with the caregiver, so such as uh, setting limits on time spent with the older adults. So they provide the caregiver time uh, to concentrate on his or her own life. So these are the uh, challenges or the stress areas that the caregiver has to face in the practice. So with that, we are going to conclude the explanation about MSW012, right? Okay. So any doubts? or any clarifications if you have just asked me so after the session definitely i'll be able to send you the ppts the prepared ppts i could uh, couldn't do the last presentation i could complete because of the lack of time and due to my personal uh, affairs sorry for that but anyways i will send the prepared ppts to the people who requested already through mail i will send it them